Well, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm here on behalf of Mayor Barry to do today's uh, Friday's Heroes and Employees of the Week. And um, I'm glad we have a lot of firefighters and fire personnel, but I'm also glad the fire marshal isn't here because it looks like a pretty crowded room. Um, today's Friday's Heroes is a really, really terrific story about um, skill and, and agency in, uh, coordination, and it, it's a great uh, background story. In, in government, and particularly in public safety, a lot of times you all know that it's hurry up and wait, and, and you wait for the next call for service or whatever it may be. And you never know when you're going to have a chance to really go to a call that you're going to be able to help somebody and, and, and make a difference that day and maybe be the most important person in, uh, in government. And that's what today's story is about. It's a great story about uh, some interagency um, efforts between the Albuquerque Police Department and Albuquerque Fire Department. And we're recognizing members of the Albuquerque Fire Department and Police Department about a situation where uh, back, I believe it was July 29th, a, a panicked father had called 911. And he called into 911 and st reported that his son was in the area, him and his son were in the area of Arroyo uh, location south of Central and west of Juan Tabot, um, out by, it, it's way down in South Eubank area. And it's one of those areas that's common to Albuquerque where we have, you know, a, a, an urban setting of a city, but we have surrounding rural pockets, which is kind of wilderness terrain. And that's what this was. And the father's panic uh, was based upon the fact that, that uh, his son, his 18-year-old son, had driven his ATV off a 25-foot uh, uh, drop, an embankment-type drop, into a gulch, and he was driving about 40 miles an hour. And it obviously caused the, the folks at 911, some questions about his location and uh, the extent of his injuries and the situation itself. And since th that happened, the area was fairly inaccessible um, to, to emergency crews and the like. And what ended up happening was uh, APD and AFD had a great coordinated, unified, uh, coordinated response with multiple agencies uh, that had to perform this rescue. And APD uh, folks, officers Max Miranda and Tom Melvin, um, ended up in the open space having to drive their bicycle officers and they had their, their, officer, their, their bicycles that day and they had to go into the wilderness, identify the location. Um, AFD themselves, Lieutenant Joe Luna, Lieutenant Paramedic Clint Anderson, uh, Clint Anderson, I'm sorry, and Justin Spain as well. And so what we had was we had the coordination of the alarm room at AFD able to disseminate all the important communications information with the various agencies to what, where the location was, what the situation was, what the extent of the injury was, what resources were required, and it ended up being where the best option was an air extrication that was done by the National Guard's Air Rescue Unit. And the terrain is obviously very difficult in that area. Um, members of AFD included, again, Lieutenant Joe Luna, Clint Anderson, Ray Gutierrez, Courtney Rhodes and Derek Ross, drivers Justin Spain, Dale Knighton, Corey Phillips, Jason Martinez, Michael Palmer, firefighter Sarah Jones, Shannon Crawford, Jose Gomez, Gomez Anthony Mazzotti, Joe Fraley, and David Baca. And uh, as I mentioned, members of APD on this story were uh, Max Miranda and Tom Melvin. Chief Schultz and Chief Breen are with us today. And if you guys could come up and add a little bit to this situation, we appreciate it, Chiefs. Thank you, Mr. Perry. Uh, we're very fortunate that the Albuquerque Police Department and Albuquerque Fire Department have a good, strong working relationship, and, and this time of year it's even more important. Uh, the city of Albuquerque, the community, likes to get out and enjoy the outdoors, and I think we've had three search and rescue incidents in about the last three weeks. And on a regular basis, we see members from APD and AFD working together to get those folks out of these positions they find themselves in. This is just another example of us using all the resources available, including our bike officers to get out there, provide information, work hand in hand with AFD and get this young man uh, out of a very bad situation. So we're just very fortunate to have the uh, officers like we've got working for the department and the firemen and paramedics that go out and serve our community each and every day. Jim. Thank you. And this is Emergency response is a team sport, and this is just another example of how we work together with different agencies, not only within the city, but outside of the city, 
um, to respond to these incidents. And this is a um, this is a result of not only interagency agreements, but we practice and train together. And when there is an emergency incident like this, we come together to save lives. And that's what that's what we're here to do: is to protect the protect our public and to save their lives when need be. And, and there's another rescue we'd like to highlight as well. This particular weekend, there was two rescue incidents, not only the one in Tejeras Arroyo near the end of Eubank um, in that area or south of Eubank, but also one in the foothills. Um, the one in the foothills um, was another multi-agency um, incident where we had um, Albuquerque Fire Department, Albuquerque Police, Open Space Police, Bernalillo County Fire Department, um, the Albuquerque Mountain Rescue Council, which is a volunteer organization, and um, also uh, U.S. military with the National Guard. And again, this is another example of emergency response really being a team sport. Usually we operate within about 200 feet of our apparatus, but in this particular case, emergency responders had to travel um, over two miles into the foothills and evacuate somebody that was over 300 pounds. Um, all the players had practiced and trained together before, um, but it all starts with good interagency agreements. But but probably most importantly, why these things are successful is because we have highly trained and proficient emergency responders that when something goes down like this, a technical rescue, we all come together, um, we, we use our expertise and our skills, and we save lives. And this is how it's supposed to work. Various emergency response agencies coming together and saving lives. And this is what you can expect from your firefighters, your police officers, your National Guard, and your volunteer search and rescue teams. So we will collectively recognize this large group of people. Thanks, Chief. Yes, sir. We're going to toss out these, uh, these emblems, which are Friday's Heroes Awards for both the fire and the, and the police department. So, Chief, if you could ask your folks to come on up. I, I like that. So, come on. <laughs> Thank you. Just yep. make your way to the Max. front, fellas. Here you go, buddy. Yeah. Yeah. Tom. Thanks, Thanks, Tom. Appreciate Thank it. Good work. And now we have the coins for the fire fighters. You want to come on over here, Chief? Thanks. They're gonna they're gonna yep. circle back. Okay. You want to distribute guess, those? Yes, sir. I will. Here he goes. Ma'am, ladies, gentlemen, well done. Job Excellent well done job. Yep. And, and this is our, you were there too, right? Yes, sir. This is our PJ student. Um, he's, we uh, support the U.S. military by allowing these gentlemen to learn from uh, um, their, our experience on the streets. He will be uh, probably serving in the U.S. military here shortly on an operational mission, um, doing the same thing, search and rescue, saving lives. So I need one coin for him. So again, we just want to want to express our thanks from here at the mayor's office on behalf of the citizens of Albuquerque to the, the finest uh, fire department in the United States. We're the 31st largest city in the country, and I think we have some of the most unique uh, uh, challenges for our public safety officers from both fire and police. So on behalf of uh, the mayor, I'd like to express my thanks to AFD and their excellent personnel, as well as APD and their excellent personnel. Let's give them a hand. <laughs> Thanks, you guys. We're next going to move to uh, the, the portion of the ceremony that recognizes the employee of the week. We're just going to let it clear out a little bit up here. And if Michael Farias and, uh, and Mike Torres and, and Supervisor Andrew Torrin could come on up, I'd appreciate it. This is a great story as well. Mike Frias works as a clean city supervisor for the Department of Solid Waste, and Mike's our employee of the week. Recently, <coughs> Michael played a key role in ensuring the safety of a young, vulnerable uh, child. Last month, uh, Michael was contacted by one of his, his coworkers, informing him that a child had appeared to be lost and was wandering around, walking around by himself. 
Uh, Michael immediately went to the location, located the child, and uh, realized that something was, was amiss there, and he contacted the Albuquerque Police Department on his way. Told him about the situation. When he, when he arrived and he found the child, he began to try to communicate with, with this young child, and the child appeared very frightened and uh, apprehensive, and he continued to, I guess, move away and, and uh, you know, was scared, and he continued to move away further and further. Michael was able to get close to the child, and he realized that the boy couldn't really understand and communicate real well. And apparently a nearby citizen had saw the situation and was familiar um, with the child, and, and he said the child might be autistic, and in fact the child was autistic. So Michael stayed with the child until APD showed up a short time later, and they helped get the, 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 the child home to his, his parents. So Michael didn't have to do that, and that's an example of going above and beyond the call of uh, your job and, and duty and service to the city in the name of helping out our citizens, in this case, you know, a young boy that was probably very, very scared. And you did that, and you stepped up, and, and you know, the Albuquerque's a better place from it. We're all pl proud of you and appreciate it. And uh, Mike Torres and, and Andrew Torn, actually, Michael's supervisor from Solid Waste, is here as well. Would you like to say something about this, Andrew? Oh, Mike's an exceptional employee. He's a really good guy, great to work with, and uh, didn't surprise me at all when, he, when I found out what he'd done, how he helped the child. And so I felt like I had to nominate him for this because he really deserved it. That's great. We're glad that you nominated him too, Andrew, because this is a very well-deserved award. On behalf of Mayor Barry, we have uh, the, the Employee of the Week mug and we also have um, a, a, a plaque basically a certificate recognizing you as employee of the week and a letter of appreciation so thank, thank you. you let's thank give you. Michael a big hand thank you very much. Thank you.